Okay, we're ready to move on now. You all should have completed the button mini assignment. So now you understand how to create buttons. The next step is to use your buttons to do something, do some navigation. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this photo viewer. Go ahead and click on this. It gives you a brief dis uh, description assignment. You can go ahead and read that on your own. Um, the best way to get an idea for a photo viewer is let's just take a look at some of the samples. Here's a real simple one I made. It starts with the very first frame, picture of me. Click on the little button, goes to the next frame, next frame, and so on. Um, here's a little be better one that one of the kids did a couple years back, Joe McCain. Added some sound effects, like a little camera. Some of the top picks in the NBA draft. Go back, forward, I can reverse. He's gone in and added graphics, you know, added in... Um, some facts about each player. Just done a really good job putting this together. Uh, and here's another one that uh, Ted Kindig did with famous works of art that he recreated. Very cool. Very cool stuff. So, so looking back here, this is going to really come in handy as you go ahead and do this. This uh, this project, this little sample timeline. This is what the timeline ended up looking like once I finish it and you can see with this assignment we're gonna finally start getting into layers we have multiple layers um, you're gonna have keyframes and regular frames we're gonna have actions on our layers to cause them to do stuff and of course we're gonna have the all important navigation where we put our buttons uh, we're also gonna um, get in the habit of locking down layers when you're not working on them you can see in this picture I've locked down three of the layers photos caption and actions so that I could work on the navigation layer um, it's very good habit to get into or lock down your layers as you go. So first thing you want to do is to pick a topic that you want to use for your photo viewer. Um, if you're not sure, heck, just click on here. There's a link to the Eastern website. Got tons of pictures you can choose from. I'm going to go ahead and do mine on um, the men's basketball game versus Everett. So click in here. And I'm just going to kind of randomly go through and pick five different pictures. Looks like a pretty good one. I'm going to right click, save that picture. Now I've already saved four of them, so I've got my fifth one, I'm all set. And now I'm ready to go ahead and open up Flash. Start a new file. Okay, looks good, and I'm going to do a show all. So, first step, let's look at that timeline again. Where did that timeline go? Uh, first step is let's go ahead and start by putting in the photos. We'll do the photo layers and do that first. So I'm going to double click on layer one, call it photo. And now I'm going to file, import. And actually what I'm going to choose, I'm going to import them to the library. Import to library. I'm going to go find those pictures. If I can find them. My documents, flash. There they are. Let's see if I can do them all at once. I'm going to select all five of them by using my shift key. Say open. And now um, I have my library open. If yours is closed. I'm going to go ahead and hit F11. That'll open your library up. And since I haven't saved this file yet, it says library untitled 2. You notice my other library is still open, the button 1 mini flash, because I left that from before. I'm going to undock that and close that so I don't get confused. I'm going to go ahead and save this file before I move on and I'm going to call it photo viewer. Okay, I really like working with out of my library so I can control the pictures one at a time. I can bring them in as I want them. Here's the preview. So first step is bring in that first picture. Now it's a little bit big, too big for the stage. So I'm going to go ahead and use my free transform tool grab the corner hold on my shift key and I'm going to resize that picture and I'm going to make a mental note of the width and the height it came down to 440 was my width so I want to try to be somewhat consistent with my photographs now before you get your next photo you need to create a new keyframe it's very important that each photo gets its own keyframe otherwise all the photos will, will be on top of each other so I'm going to right click insert a blank keyframe since I'm starting over bring my next picture out on the stage comes in too big what was that dimension if I go back to frame one it was 440 was my width 
So I'm going to free transform this thing down. And I'm going to bring this to about 440 or so. That's pretty close, 439. And, and so on and so forth. Keep doing that. Go kind of fast here. You can fast forward this part of the movie and get on to the next part. Okay, looks good. Now I got my photo layer. It looks it looks good. I've got five different pictures, one in each frame. And what you want to do now is you should control K, which opens up your alignment panel. I'm going to dock that in place. And I want to align each one of these pictures centered up to the stage. That way when the person flips through my photo viewer, all the pictures are lined up. They look good. Now, something you're going to want to consider, depending on your power levels, uh, remember Joe McCain, who did the one on the NBA draft, he had done a much, a much different style. This is a very simple uh, photo view with just pictures in the middle, you know, whereas he had put his pictures over the side, added in some, some uh, facts about each player, and he just put together a whole little, almost like a mini website. So if you want to go tackle something like that, that would definitely look better. Now, if you want a different background color on each slide, you can change the background instead of making it white. Um, say like gray, but that will instantly apply itself to all um, frames. Uh, you cannot do that one by one. Each frame can't be a different color. Now if you want to do that, I noticed some of you guys, I know it's Justin and Apple is doing it, um, there is a way you can um, increase that a little bit. You can do it by adding a whole new layer and I'm going to put it at the very bottom of my um, timeline. Notice how I did that. I grabbed it and moved it down to the bottom and I'm going to call it background. This is optional. You don't have to do this. But it can be cool. So I can draw a rectangle now and come on. Why is that rounded? Turn up that rounding. This is driving me crazy. Delete that. Draw a freaking rectangle. There you go. Okay, looks like junk. But you can go in here and maybe give it a different look. Double click it first. Looks kind of cool. And this is radio. You can go up to your color mixer. Maybe you want to make it linear. And maybe you want to have it start green and go to black. That looks kind of cool. Um, I'm totally up to you if you want to do that, mess around with backgrounds. Um, if you did want to do that, you could go to each one of the keyframes and you can, each one of the uh, frames of the background layer, you could insert in a new blank keyframe and then you would draw uh, another rectangle and this time you would make it maybe red. You gotta double click it first. And then, you know, we'd have one that was green, one that was brown and red, whatever. So you decide on that. So that's a background optional. Now I've got my photo layer. Uh, my next layer I wanted to do was my caption layer. So let's go ahead and insert a new layer. By the way, that I didn't mention last time, it's that little white piece of paper. It says plus. That's an insert a new layer. This is a something called a guide path, motion path. You don't want to mess with that yet. And this is inserting a whole folder. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a new layer, and I'm going to call this one uh, Captions. And Captions are, are just little sayings or words underneath each picture. Now what you're going to want to do before you start working in your captions, you want to be very careful that you don't accidentally, if you watch what I'm doing, I may accidentally click on the photo, then go over to letter A and start typing for the caption. Now the problem with doing that is this letter DDD, if you look up at your timeline and 
the caption layer, frame one, it's still a blank circle, it's still how. So those that DDD did not go in the caption layer. It actually went in the photo layer because that had been selected. And that can, depending on your project, can really come back to haunt you. So what you want to do, get rid of that, is lock down layers when you're not working on them. And then you, it's impossible for you to accidentally put the caption inside a different layer. So I'm going to lock down photo and lock down background by just clicking on that little button there. You can also click on this to give you an outline view only. Uh, sometimes that's handy if you're looking, you want to look through the object and see the outline, or do you want to turn it off all together, you press the I. And for this, you don't really need to do that. So I just lock those two things down. Now click back into frame one of the caption layer so you're actually there. Then click on your letter A, and then you want to write a little saying, uh, how about channel 21 on the spot? Whatever. And that color does definitely does not go. How about a black? No. How about a gray? Ye yellow? Red. 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 That looks like great. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and do captions for each of the pictures. Now notice what happened. You inserted a keyframe in one. It automatically inserted a frame in five in the caption layer. And when you go to each of the frames, you now see that channel 21 all throughout your video. It does that because you already had created five frames. So it's assuming that whatever you do in the caption layer, you want to automatically paste it into every other frame. And it does that for you. Of course, you don't want that. If you went to frame two and double clicked on channel 21 and started to change this, what happens is it would change in one as well. So what you need to do is you need to insert a blank keyframe in frame two of the caption layer so that you can start over. There it is. Now that other caption's gone. Now I can go ahead and write in uh, Coach Nelson. Uh, cool. And so on and so forth. You get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and just insert blank keyframes. You add those captions in later. So that's the caption layer. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, next up, our navigation, our, our um, ability to control this movie. Let's go ahead and I'm going to stop here and um, do that in the second half of this video.